I'm recording. Okay. All right. So, here's the tool that you need to braid. You need a comb, and I like these kind of combs because it has a relatively sharp first tooth, and then the rest of the teeth are pretty small. Good pair of scissors, very nice, strong. I like the big holes in there because I have big hands. That's right. Okay. Now this is the magic right here. This is a clipper blade from a big body clipper. It's been used. It's dull. It's not razor sharp anymore. Now down in here, they have little uh, use because they bolt on to the clipper. But if you don't cover them, and when you're using this, you can cut your finger on it. So I use duct tape, and I tape around it. Now these are very fine teeth, you can see, very fine teeth. But they're also sharp on the back side. There's a little cutter there. So the hair is very good at getting in there, and then you can cut it like that. And that gives you a feathered end. Now I'd like to show you what a feathered end means. You can see how there's no bluntness to this mane. All the ends are all different lengths, but it's a generally the same length. But when you go to braid, you want everything really evenly feathered out and the same consistent thickness. Now this is not a real thick mane, but there is one spot right in here that is a little thicker. And the only way you can tell is to actually grab the hair and cone it out and feel it. Okay, so it's thin up here, and it's thicker right here, and then it gets thin down here. And this is what I'm talking about, and this is what I was talking about as far as making everything consistent and even. You don't want one thing, one spot here where there's way more braids here than there are everywhere else. It makes your braids look clumpy and uneven, and it draws your eye to that spot. So you want to uh, you want to take care of that. Now. If a horse doesn't like something, it will let you know. And that will be tossing its head, pinning its ears, stomping around, trying to get away from you, and acting like it doesn't appreciate what you're doing. Um, and when your hair is being pulled out in big clumps, that's an actual normal response. So you need to be able to watch your horse and make sure you're not hurting it and not making it angry. So I'll take a section of hair where I know I need to thin it out, and then I'll feather it up, like that, okay? And then I'll pull a tiny little bit out. Now you can see that most of that got pulled right out. She didn't even blink, okay? It doesn't really hurt them if you feather it out well and just take a little bit at a time. If you take a big old hunk like this and yank, boy, that's going to hurt. It's going to hurt anybody and anything, even if they're, you know, not, uh, uh, you know, a, a delicate little horse. I mean, it's, it's just going to really be bad for them. So you want to take it and kind of pull with your hand and your knife at the same time. And what that'll do is cut a lot of the hair and then pull some of, it, some of it out. You can see the short hair and you can see the long hair. So um, what you're starting to do is feather the ends out. And that'll keep your braid from being a long, straight, thick braid that doesn't have any coning or feathering to it. Now, to do this correctly, it takes a while. You don't do anything in a big hurry. And you try to take your time and not make your horse upset. Okay? So, so the first couple times, I just pulled, uh, I just clipped the hair, and then I pulled a little out because I'm working towards the... Sorry, sorry, don't worry. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Moving back. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, we're starting at the bottom, working our way up, and this is the thicker spot, so I'm going to th thin that hair out really thin and just pull. And you're only talking about you know, 30, 40 hairs at a time. If you're getting any big clumping, like if you're, if you're trying to pull the horse's mane, 
and you're not feathering it out like that, and it's all in one big spot, in one little tiny area, and you're pulling a big clump, they're really going to object to that. Okay, and she can feel a little of this hair coming out, so I'm going to make sure I take even less. But I'm pulling all of this hair out because this is the thick, clumpy spot. And it doesn't really hurt much. You know, I'm sure she feels it, but it's not like it's really hurting. And now I'm going to go back to cutting because I'm working up more here where it's thinner. And then I'm going to go back to cutting. I'm going to go back to cutting. You can see she's tossing her head around a little bit, so I need to make sure I'm being gentle. So I take less, okay? See? Less is better than more, especially at this job, because you don't want your horse mad or have any bad associations with braiding. Good baby, good baby. So this job does take a while. It takes a while to do it right. It takes a while to treat your horse right. And it's not something that happens overnight. You don't learn it overnight. You don't accomplish anything overnight. You pull and do and cut up and down, up and down. Now she's a baby still. She's not all grown up. I used to braid her a long time ago, but she's had some time off. But you can see how there's a nice feather going along. And you can see how since I've worked right here, I got a little shortness going on here, and I want to make sure I even it up. Okay, I'm going to feather it all the way up and pull and cut. I'm going to feather it all the way up, pull and cut. Feather it all the way up, pull and cut. And you just want to keep doing this and working with her and making sure that you don't hurt your horse or make her really mad. She's not mad about it, but <clears throat> she knows what's going to happen. She knows I'm going to braid it. She knows what I'm doing. And really all this is is an imposition on her time. So you want to make sure that it's not going to be a fight. And if you kind of give a little turn to your wrist as you do it, you kind of cut at a little bit of an angle because you want that feather, that's how you establish the feather, is to not cut straight across, but to cut at an angle like this. If you just go up and straight, that's not what you want because you're going to have part of your hair, your plait, it's just going to disappear. You want all of it to reach the bottom that's there. You don't want your hair to be chopped off here in a big line, in a big thick line. You want that feather to go through the hair like this. I've seen some people who don't use this, who use their scissors, do it this way. They'll take and feather it up like that, and then cut which doesn't give you nearly the amount of feather, but it does take off the ends with a horse that just won't let you pull its mane. Okay? You can trim it the same way, but that's really at the very last stages of pulling. And see, she doesn't even kind of mind that. But back to the blade, because it's really the most important the, the, I'm sorry, not the most important, but it's really the easiest way to establish a feather, and if you're doing it correctly, you're not going to hurt your horse. See, she was just a little nervous at first, but you just be gentle, and you keep working, and you can start to see how that hair is shortening evenly, and she's She's not minding it. I'm not yanking hard. I'm not taking much at a time. She can definitely feel it, as anybody would. But the idea is to go slow and to not make this a torture process, which is what happens when you twitch them and 
force your agenda on them. You know, they get really bad associations. Oh no, 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 they're gonna rip on my neck today. And it makes it harder to braid the horse. It makes it, every aspect of what you're doing much more difficult. And then more difficult means more time consuming. Just gonna keep working the hair up. I'm just gonna keep, ah, that's my toe, baby. Tit for tat, huh? And in that one spot, I'm gonna try to take a little bit of hair as I go back and forth. In that one little spot right here, I'm gonna try to take a little tiny bit of hair so that the mane evens out. Now don't think that I'm changing the way I do anything at the show. I don't care if it takes me an hour to do this job. If you don't do this job correctly, you're not going to make beautiful braids. It's just not going to happen. And if you take a shortcut here, you're going to end up getting your horse to not trust you and not want to let you work on it. See, I can grab a whole bunch of that hair and once I work my, my fingers down, now I'm just dealing with the longest section of hair that's left. Okay? I grab a whole big section and then once I get down to the tippy tip end, then I'll feather that up and I'll pull and cut. See, most of this I'm cutting, a tiny little bit I'm pulling because I'm working my way back up into that thick spot. And I want to be able to make sure that I can still thin that area out just a tiny little bit so she can feel the difference. But not much, really. I'm not taking much and it's not hurting much. Poor baby, baby, oh. Thank you, man. Okay. And once you comb it out, you kind of fluff the hair back up because you've teased it up. You want to make sure you're not leaving a clump in there. Oh, baby, baby, baby. Not that far. There we go, baby. Okay, so good. Now we're starting to establish a nice short area here. So let's even it up at the ends. Feather it up nice and thin. Give it a little cut. Feather it up. Give it a cut. Feather it up, 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 give it a cut. Now you're probably going to have to do this bottom to top, top to bottom, up and down, 30 or 40 times. It's not something that you can do quickly. And the faster you try to do it, and the faster you try to get it over with, the harder it's going to be on the horse. Feather it up, give it a little cut. Feather it up, give it a little cut. Plus I pulled a few hairs because this is just the one thick spot that I want to thin out a tiny little bit. Okay. You take the hair and she doesn't really mind. She's like, oh, what are you doing? Okay. See, now the mane is getting much shorter but it's not getting blunted at all. In fact, I'm establishing a much better feather to the hair, but it's uneven, so I'm gonna still keep working. Feather it up, give it a cut. Feather it up, give it a cut. Okay, I'm still taking my time, and I'm trimming mostly, pulling a little tiny bit. Feather it up, give it a cut. Now, you wanna feather up at least a couple inches. Okay, I usually go about two or three inches up. There you go. See, I pulled some more. That way you won't ever end up with any kind of bluntness to the ends because that blunt thick end of that braid makes it really hard to turn. Okay? If you have a unisized braid that goes all the way down, the the hair at the, end of the, at the end of that braid is going to be just as thick at the bottom as it was at the top. So
So trying to take and tie that tail end off and try to turn it so it stays inside your braid and not sticking out the top of your horse's neck is going to be impossible. I can't do it and I don't know anybody else who can. So this is really, before you do anything else, this is really the best way to make your horse's braids look good is to learn to feather out your mane, get a good length for the braid size that you like, and then go from there. Because it's almost impossible to do a beautiful job on a poorly pulled mane. Now you can see the ends are starting to even out in a nice feather. Much more the same length everywhere. Now my best perspective, I like to look from down at the bottom here. So if you want to come around me, you'll get a little bit better view. There you go. Thank you very much. Of the overall. See, it's still not quite even, not quite perfect. And like I said, it's not going to happen quickly. I usually make sure that this is to the back side. Feather up, give it a cut. Feather it up, give it a cut. Feather it up, give it a cut. Any clumpiness, any thickness, you'll be able to feel because you're trying to make a gauge in your fingers using your thumb and your forefinger, you try to be able to feel that thickness. And you'll be able to feel big, thick clumps. You'll get better at it the more you do it, but you have to do it. Your hands are going to be what teaches you just as much as the words and the instruction that I give, because practice, practice, practice makes perfect. Listening to me all day long won't help you unless you actually get your hands in the main and you start doing it. Now this is a good way to get your horse to trust you. If you know, if your horse knows, hey, you know what, this could really hurt if he was doing it wrong, and you take your time, and you're kind to your horse, and you give it breaks, and you don't expect it to be perfect every second, your horse is going to appreciate you. Because this is kind of a fact of life for show horses. They get braided. It can either be a nice day at the salon or it can be a bad day at the salon. And since we're playing beauty shop for horses right now, we want it to be a nice day at the salon. Okay, you can see how that feather is starting to really look much better, much more even. Now this is starting to approach the length of hair that I like. I can lay my hand over it, and you can see the feathered ends about an inch past my hand. Okay, I'm not right at the top of the crest, but I'll roll my hand down, and there you go. And that'll help me gauge how long the hair really is, because sometimes their heads are up and down and inconsistent, but your hand breadth is a good indicator of how long the hair really is, and also how thick it is, because you're always able to Run your hands through it and feel it. And then you just keep working. Little baby steps, especially when you've been doing it a little while. You don't want to rush this job. You don't want to accidentally take too much. And you really want to pull from the underside all the way evenly, consistently. You don't want to just take from the under. You don't want to take from the top. You want all the hair to be evenly thinned and feathered. Um, I've seen a lot of times when people just pull on the underside and there's big bald patches and holes in the neck because they used a comb that has bigger teeth, wider teeth, and they just wrecked. Okay, there was no way for that hair to feather out and come out evenly, and they did the job too quickly. Okay, see how nice and even this line is starting to look? What's, what's, what you're really looking for is 
how much light can you see through the bottom? If there's any bluntness, you won't see any light through it at all. But you can see lots of light through here. You can see that all the ends are feathered unevenly, but evenly at the same time. It's a general feather. You don't want, you know, any appearance of that because that's going to make your ends blunt. And a blunt end is hard to catch, hard to tie up, and uh, will make your braid look a little clumpy. So I'm going to take just a little, just a little, right there. I'm just going to pull that out. Because I've been working on this area the whole time, it's probably a little sore by now. But she really doesn't look like she's minding. She's over here yawning. She's <laughs> relaxing. And nobody's really braided this horse for a while, so you know she's not really used to being braided and handled. So the top here is a little bit long still. And I'd like to emphasize, if you have to have an area that's a little tiny bit short, the top by the ears is better to have short than long. Okay? Because a long braid at the top tends to, tends to end up looking wormy and doesn't really want to lay in place right. And if they ever do rub, a long wormy braid is going to uh, move and become twisted much faster than a shorter braid that's tied down more in the center than, you know, at the top. I'm starting to be happy with this. It's still a little, little tiny bit long at the top. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab a big old clump, feather it out. starting to see how nicely feathered and even that hair length is. A okay. little tiny bit more. See if you press your hand flat on that neck as you're doing it. You can see it's really getting consistent and even. There's a few tiny little spots that aren't perfect. But again, uh, the reason that you tie the braids off before you get to the end is so that you can make the bottom line look better than it is. Even if there are imperfections in the length, you're tying the ends up anyways. So it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. You just have to be consistent about doing the job. And that'll make it look good. So I'm about done here. Little tiny bit. Little tiny bits. Little tiny bits. Okay. It looks pretty good. Okay. It's going to be beautiful bright. Now I often use my mouth when I shouldn't. <laughs> I put the comb in my mouth. But do that with a clean horse. <laughs> If they lay down in poopies, you don't want to put the poopy comb in your mouth. Don't do something the way I do it just because you saw me do it. Just taking the ends. Just giving a little hooky cut, cut like that. And we're going to be about done. Just the last little ends right here you can see are just a little tiny bit long. Hello. 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 You see that little clump? You can see that little clump right there. Brush it back out. See, there's bugs that are bothering her more than the main pulling. Okay. Tiny little bit right here, you can see right there. I'm going to try to grab that hair, clip it off. But there you go. No need to go, you know, to extremes. You don't have to go crazy pulling the hair out. And what we've done is we've evened it out everywhere. I'm going to take a little bit of this right at the end because the withers, the 
hair's the thinnest down here and sparsest. So you want to try to leave as much as you can, really. Because the more you braid it, the less there's going to be because every time you braid it, you lose some hair. There you go. All right. Tiny little bit of a dip right here. I'm happy with this. Like I said, you don't need to go crazy. There's a tiny little bit right there. But you created an overall, a much better looking mane to start with. So you're going to have much better looking braids if you start from here than starting before. All these ends are going to have tail ends that are going to be easy to tie, easy to catch the knot, the, the hair in the knot. So when you have your braids, it's all braided down, you don't see the hair sticking down at the bottom, which is uh, something that happens when they rub. And there's nothing you can do if they scrub, 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 except uh, rebraid. 